Good evening, Luther Memorial Church. We are so glad you're worshiping with us tonight. Obviously, worship looks a little different this evening. We are still here in Luther Memorial Church recording this worship service. We will work from Holden evening, and we want to continue to bring you worship services that are meaningful and connect you with one another and with God. So over the next few weeks, we'll continue to record and hopefully get this link out to everyone so you can continue to participate. Um, if you haven't heard yet, we are suspending in-person worship, team meetings, and other functions happening here at church. And we're going to work really hard to keep connected with folks over these next few weeks uh, as we look into what the future holds for us. Uh, we do want to let everyone know that if you have any needs or you need a word of encouragement, to please call the church. Uh, the pastors will be here through all of this, providing hope and care for everyone in need. So we encourage you to reach out to one another, but also to reach out to us. And we will hold you all in prayer. We thank you for being gracious with us tonight as we attempt this new form, but uh, we hope that it's meaningful for you. Let's begin by taking a moment of silence to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine.
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. And for those of you watching and following along, we're going to be reading Psalm 27 responsibly. So I will lead with the first verse. And those who would like, follow along with Patrick, Pastor Patrick, as he reads verse 2, and we go through this remarkable psalm in this manner. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witness has risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. The Gospel for this evening comes from the fourth chapter of St. John. And I've asked Pastor Patrick to join me in the reading of it. I will read the part spoken by the woman whose story we are now about to say. Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard, Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John. Although it was not Jesus himself, but his disciples who baptized, he left Judea and started back to Galilee but he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask of me, a woman of Samaria, a drink? For Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, 
Give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews, but the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is the Spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Philippine said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When He comes, He will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am He, the one who is speaking to you. Just then His disciples came. They were astonished that He was speaking with a woman. But no one said, What do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving. Wages is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered their labor. Many Samaritans from the city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days, and many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. God, thank you for the stories of your people throughout the ages. Thank you for the cries of the old psalmists that we can read and cry with today. Thank you for the moments of rejoicing. Lord, we need some rejoicing. But thank you most of all that you are with us, as you were with Moses and Miriam, as you were throughout time, throughout tragedy, throughout celebration. You are with us this night. Send your Holy Spirit to lift our hearts and to bless us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It was a fine September morning. I was working at my desk when the phone rang. I answered. It was my mother. She said, do you know what's happening? No. 
He said, turn on your television. Ours didn't work. So I went over to the student center. And there I watched in near disbelief as we saw the planes hit the twin towers. And we watched those towers fold. I watched again and again until I remembered that while I was a student, I was also a pastor. And so I left campus and I went up to near north side Chicago to Lakeview Lutheran and I opened the doors of the congregation. And people came in off the streets and the streets of Chicago were remarkably quiet. Fear was everywhere in those days. We thought the Sears Tower would be taken down next. The president went up in Air Force One and all the other airplanes were grounded. It was a strange and eerie time. There were breakthroughs of miracles and breakthroughs of kindness. Weeks later, when our airplanes went up and the terrorists had been identified, one of our congregation called me in horror. He said he couldn't sleep, he couldn't eat, he couldn't think, he couldn't work, he couldn't. And as he was talking, I heard the television repeating the episode of the airplanes hitting the towers over and over and over again. I asked him to turn off the television, to set it down, and to turn his heart and his mind towards the living God. I may even have repeated to him the opening verses of Psalm 27 which I had been repeating myself over and over again as people from the streets flooded our congregation with questions about God. As the old psalmist said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And in time we did turn off our televisions, and we gathered to discuss more calmly God questions. We even held a huge baseball tournament in an open field because it was a benefit for the homeless who needed help. We were afraid and we gathered in prayer and we gathered to discuss the promises and the name of the Lord our God. The fear we walk with these days is different. We're not afraid of the bombs dropping. We are afraid of the spray of conversation springs. Though it has been many years since I worked as a trauma nurse, I deeply respect the medical field and the cautions. And I am concerned when told that the people of God cannot gather. But I know, like tonight, we can gather in word and song. We can keep physical distance but we can gather in worship. And so I welcome you, and I am glad tonight as we will gather in worship and prayer. Remember that in the strangest time our world has ever seen, when graves are open, when people walk the streets, when the day turned dark at midday, when the earth shook, those who knew the living Lord Jesus Christ gathered in prayer to comfort one another, to encourage and to remind each other about the word of our living God. And so this day we gather, we comfort one another, we pray, all while listening to the voice of our medical personnel, our government, and the Center for Disease Control. In this day, I would ask you to turn to the Psalms as we read Psalm 27. Listen to what the old psalmist had to say. One thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all well, the days of my life, and to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. As we join together in prayer and in God's word, let us consider the gospel text for today, the gospel of John. Remember, life wasn't easy for John. It wasn't simple, and in today's text, the story he tells will explain, I hope, how the life as we live it is in different levels of meaning. And John gives us the story of 
a woman at a well. And as he tells the story, he goes through those various levels of meaning as we have various levels in our lives and our understanding. You know the story. Remember the simplistic reading, the one I heard when I was a child. Well, there was Jesus, and he was at a well, and along came a woman who had five husbands and was living with one who was not her own. So she was bad, and Jesus was good, because he even spoke to that bad woman. Not only that, he opened up the blessings of the kingdom and spoke of living waters. Wonderful. But what about a first century reading? What about the times when John wrote? We now know that women in Jesus' day had no power. If a man in front of witnesses said about a woman, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you, she was out with no recourse. He could say anything was poor now or bad within her. She could either get remarried if anyone would have her, or starve herself, or turn to prostitution. Men did not speak to women. But as she listened, Jesus gave her a gift of understanding beyond comprehension. And how about the comic reading? Have you considered the comic reading? There is within our Bible wonderful hilarious pieces, along with a very serious and important pieces. But as good students of the Old Testament of our entire Bible, you know that many of our patriarchs found their wives by a well. Single man, unmarried woman. Dum dum da dum. Dum dum da dum. It's a setup. It's funny. There are wonderful comic pieces in some of the things we read. And it's fun. Let a little bit of fun flow into our lives. And of course, there's the very important Old Testament reading. The woman with Five husbands, living with one who was not her own, lived among a people from five different nations who worshipped one who was not their own. In 722, when the king of Assyria wiped out the midsection of Israel, he planted five different people, and each people brought their own god. And when the lions and the bears were attacking, they wrote to the king and they said, send us a priest of this land who can teach us how to worship this God. So the woman with five husbands, living with one who was not her own, lived with five peoples who worshipped a God who was not their own. And of course, there's a geographic reading. Geography matters. It matters in our lives. Jesus was almost certainly down by the fords of the Jordan right there by the Dead the Salt Sea, the Dead Sea. That's the lowest point on Earth, about 800 feet below sea level. Told the drying of the Dead Sea, it may have gotten worse these days. He had to go from the Dead Sea up to the Sea of Galilee, right along the Jordan Valley, very easy, straight shot, but he had to go up into Samaria, 2,400 feet above sea level, way up, he had to go. It makes no sense at all why he had to go up out of his way to go back down unless he had to go to meet this particular woman. And then, of course, there's a theological reading. And aren't we here to discuss theology? Jesus has his single longest conversation with anyone in the Gospel of John with the unnamed woman at the well. Look at the story. Look at the meanings. And look at how this woman changes as she encounters the living God. She was there at midday. Women don't go out alone and they don't go and fill their water jugs at midday. She talked to a strange man. Women don't talk to men. Men don't talk to women. And no Samaritan talks to a Jew. As the conversation went along, she must have been terrified. But look how her conversation changes. 
She put on a Jew, or so he was. Sir, as her respect grew, prophet, because she'd started to see Messiah as he was revealed. And she ran back to her village, so filled with the thoughts and the joy of Jesus, that the entire village came back with her. And they said, we come not because of what you said, because we have seen that this is the Savior of the world. Jesus is still the Savior of the world in this day. And Jesus is the Savior of our lives. In the words of the old psalmist, I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So wait for the Lord. This day and all days, be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. People of the living God, we will gather together in prayer. We will sing. We will comfort one another. We will call. We will respect the medical personnel. And we will encourage one another in truth and in trust. And in the name of our living Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it.
Let us pray. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the words that Jesus gave us are still powerful and are powerful this evening and all of our days. We know that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Pray with me the prayer of forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. For we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in mercy gave the only Son to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sin, as a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by his authority. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, remember us in your love, and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. Remember, Christ is with you. 